In the 10 years since Newsday started choosing the island's top restaurants, literally hundreds of eateries have made their way onto the list at one time or another. There's usually a particular magic to the place, a fusion of ambiance and food and service. Hundreds have been on and off that list, but 12 of them have been on every single list since we started doing it in 2013. Since it opened in 2009, Lola has been consistently excellent, but a lot else has changed. Initially, it was Israeli-born owner Michael Guinor's laboratory for combining elements of Middle Eastern, French, and Asian cuisine. Now, it's all about Mediterranean soul food. Over the years, celebrities, CEOs, and sports stars have walked Brian and Cooper in Roslyn, where some are immortalized with plaques on the wall of the cozy bar. But it really doesn't matter who you are, famous or not. Everyone eats the same dry-aged ribeye and porterhouse steak or stone crab or scallops, sips the same icy martinis or Napa cabs, and feels totally indulged. Almond started life in 2001 as your typical old-school French bistro in Bridgehampton and became wildly popular for its take on classic dishes like steak frites, steamed mussels, and escargot. Andrew Mahoney is the cook in residence, and he's brought a fresh approach to Almond's kitchen, Doug Galige's decision to open a seafood restaurant in 1997 was driven by Plaza Cafe's Southampton location. There was water everywhere, but no one was doing seafood. Steakhouse competition is stiff on Long Island, but Peter Luger is another spot that consistently aces the genre. It's a place where you still might feel caught in a time warp. Rituals rule here, including jacketed servers who follow up wedge salads and Luger's signature thick, fatty bacon with dry-aged porterhouse steaks. New and fresh might not be the first words that come to mind when you think of Blackstone, which after all is a steakhouse, one of the more conservative genres in the restaurant world. Besides, dependability and predictability are a big part of why the Anthony Scotto flagship has been packing them in since 2005. That and its terrific collection of dry-aged steaks and sushi that's as beautiful as it is top drawer. Mirabelle has been the essence of fine dining on Long Island since 1983. Chef Guy Rouge, born in France, championed local produce, fish, duck, and even sea salt. Over the years, his dishes integrated more ingredients from American, Asian, and Latin repertoires. And Mirabelle became increasingly less formal. It's easy to eat well on the Gold Coast, even if you don't eat meat. Lamani has been flying fish in from the Mediterranean. The vibes are so deep, you can almost feel the sea breeze ruffling your hair. It's hard to believe that not a lick of cream or butter touches the food. Once an intimate 50-seat affair on Bayshore's Lawrence Lake, the lake house got a lot bigger and bolder in 2016 when it moved into a mammoth 10,000 square foot location on Great South Bay. These days, half the menu may include dishes so beloved they become local classics, while the other half focuses on seasonally inspired fare. But through it all, the lake house's dedication to unfussy, well-balanced, and impeccably sourced dishes shines. What does it take to stay on this list for 10 years? Well, quality, and in most cases, a capacity for change to evolve with the changing tastes of Long Island's dining audience. Except for perhaps House of Doses in Hicksville, which has barely changed in the 20 years it's been in business. This has always been the go-to place for vegan and vegetarian South Indian cooking. One of the glories of South Indian cuisine is the dosa. Rava dosas are made with a wheat rice batter. Paper dosas are thinner and even bigger, rolled into massive funnels. Locally caught fish and shellfish have always been a hallmark of the menu at Nick and Tony's, where baked clams and whole roasted sea bass might be fired in the oven alongside pork chops and pizza. There's a languid quality to dinner here of simple, elegant, unfussy dishes that draw on impeccable ingredients and are the hallmark of a restaurant that stood the test of time and has excelled year after year and has been on Newsday's top 100 list for the last decade. And indeed, all of Newsday's top 100 restaurants shine none more brightly than this one, Teller's, which has been a Long Island favorite since 1999, which is when the Bolson Group had the inspired idea to carve a steakhouse out of the old First National Bank of Iceland. The vault became a wine cellar, and the bank's lobby a dining room where the ceilings are an impossibly high 32 feet, and the seafood towers are almost as tall, featuring some of the ocean's finest specimens on ice, even if it's the 35-day dry-aged steaks that have drawn crowds over the past few decades. It's a winning combination you'll find at all of Newsday's top 100 restaurants this year and every year. And 
a tribute to the growing excitement and variety of Long Island's dining scene.